Good morning. My name is Scott Rudd, the Chief Strategic Officer at T3Live.com. And I'm Brittany Umar, and together we bring you Morning Call. So we are seeing green arrows around the world as overseas markets take a cue from U.S. markets' positive lead. After yesterday, the Fed said they would taper by $10 billion, and stocks, Scott, well, they just took off. They just took off. Who would have thought so? <laughs> you know, yesterday we came in and there were a lot of different scenarios that we could have seen. And what happened was they tapered. And we talked about scenario A, which would have been, you know, if they taper, maybe it's a little bit of a surprise and markets could sell off a bit. But then I think they would be viable. I did not know they would be viable in like 10 minutes and scream into the close. But you never really know what's going to happen. But as long as you have A, B, and C type of plans, in your head, you can always act quickly. Yeah, why don't you walk us through that scenario that we talked about yesterday, that if they did taper, we would get that quick move down and then uh, it would be viable, which it definitely yeah. was, as you said. <laughs> yes, uh, Santa came a little early, thanks to Uncle Ben. Right. But with that being said, you know, the process is on the way, and that's what the street wanted. We wanted a little bit of tapering. We know that the Fed's going to be somewhat accommodative. You know, if the numbers are good and the economy is getting better, foot off the gas if for some reason we're stalling, you know, the whole nine yards. So with that being said, technically a lot to like here. You look at the chart of the SPX, you will see that, you know, this is the macro trend that we've been in since November going all the way up. This was this last upper area to navigate for alpha and PL going into the end of the year. Earlier in the week or last week you saw that we did break below the eight and the twenty one day moving average. We broke about you know below this little trend line. And then yesterday you had really a massive outside day slash red dog reversal. You know, we quickly went down when they said they would taper. And what did we touch? Oh my goodness, the 50 day moving average. And then what did we do? We reclaimed support. So just say right here, if you missed a 50 day, 1772 is your spot to maybe cover some shorts, look to get long. And even if you miss that, once we start to take out this prior resistance, you saw power, you had to get a little bit involved. 1792 is that area. And now look at us right back to the highs. Futures are down just a little bit right now. I would say as long as we hold above, you know, 1800 in the next session or so, or maybe even a little bit lower, I do think with some commitment to this, you're going to see a move through 1813, and it shouldn't take too long. Probably, you know, right by right by the time you know Santa wants to come down the chimney. Oh, all right. Yeah. So, well, yesterday, you know, we talked about the banks being a key area to focus on if we did rally, and that proved to be the case. We had the FAS ETF put in a new high. It jumped 6.3 yesterday. So would you expect some continuation there today? Well, the banks had a huge move yesterday and we talked about, you know, if the, we, we were going to get the taper and the market was going to be strong, we wanted to see the financials go. So mm -hmm. if you look at the FAS, which if you didn't want to pick a financial, you just picked the ETF. Look at that. Unbelievable move right back to highs, actually above it. You know, if you look at the overall potency of this, really strong, nice reversal, couldn't even get to the 50 days showing you some strength, and I do think this does continue. Does it go right away? Maybe not, but over the next few sessions, it digests or say above 85. I do think that this will be seeing much higher prices. Lots of igniting bars across the group. Talk about Bank of America, which was one of the stocks that Scott said to watch yesterday. He, uh, it logged a 3.3% gain after seeing a red dog reversal the day before. Yeah, like so many different patterns are just aligned yesterday. And everyone's like, oh, it happened so quick. It happened quick, but, you know, these are things that we're, we're accustomed to, that we're trained to see. And if you look here at Bank of America, you know, we talked about first igniting bar here after this, you know, long consolidation phase, which wound up giving you commitment and then a move to the highs. Since then, it's been lethargic to the downside. And just to let you know, I was in Bank of America. I got stopped out. That was the plan. You know what? Who knew what was going to happen? Stopped out at 1512, you know, and it did go as low as what? 1506. And then I came back, the Fed made their news. First move was through 1535. And then I rebought it back right around there. Okay, I didn't say, oh goodness, I got stopped out. What am I going to do? I said, okay, trade changed. And then look what happened. So with that being said, it's probably down a few shekels or a few pennies. So I would say as long as it stays above this 1546 and shows commitment, kind of like what happened here, I do think that the 16 next time it gets there, it punches through. You're bringing back shekels, huh? Shekels. <laughs> <laughs> well, yesterday Scott uh, said that Goldman Sachs actually had the best setup, and we saw it put in a new high yesterday, about 2.5% gain. So what do you see now with Goldman? Well, this should be day one. You know, this was at highs, hovering above 170, something it's been having a hard time doing. So I tweeted about it the night before. You know, this too, I was long earlier in the morning, and then I got stopped out because the Dow went from up 50 to negative, and it looked like things were pretty negative. 
and then things change. Markets are dynamic. They change. You need to change with them. You look at Goldman Sachs and you'll see what happened here. Look at this potent move to the upside through resistance. Held higher here. This was that level that it hasn't been able to come above you know, for about five, six months. Boom. Closing the highs. I think it's off maybe 30, 40 cents if it were to get through yesterday's high here of 174.92. I don't think that this stock's going to have a problem up until maybe 180, and that could happen before Christmas as well. How about City? City was one of the lagging names in the group, but yesterday was able to reclaim the support of the 8 and 21 day, so looking pretty good there. Yeah, this isn't providing leadership like a Goldman, but it's acting fine. Mm -hmm. So you look at Citigroup, you know, you get, again, you can't go with all these. You go with a few. You can go with like an ETF like the FAS, or you can go with individual names. And yesterday, hit the moving averages, reversed, engulfed the slower range. So this also is, you know, in the cards to make another move. And at some point, I do think this gets taken out. Last time, it wasn't able to. If you remember, we talked about this area. This was a nice little buyable spot right around here, and then it failed. So now, holding higher. Look, look where the old support was. You know, looks okay. I don't know if it's going to just blast through, but I would say if you got long yesterday's a swing, next area is going to be 53's resistance, and then, you know, new highs. All right, coming up, we're going to go in the trenches with some home builders and some biotechs, two groups that acted well yesterday. But first, a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. I'm Mark Sperling, Director of Trading with T3 Trading Group and contributor to T3 Live. Do you trade on your own, but you wish you enjoyed the benefits of a large trading floor? With the T3 Live virtual trading floor, we deliver that experience to you on your computer. On the VTF, you can follow the long and short positions of experienced professional traders like myself, Scott Redler, and others, and listen to our live radio stations as we navigate the markets. In addition, you get the added value of a large community of sophisticated and like-minded traders. In my opinion, joining the room will be the best trading decision you will ever make. I would like to invite you to begin your membership with a seven-day free trial. To get started, visit t3live.com and click on the Virtual Trading Floor tab. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you in the VTF. We're back and going in the trenches with the home builders and biotechs, two groups that acted well yesterday. Let's start with the home builders, especially in light of existing home sales that we have today at 10 a.m. This was a strong group yesterday and a good sign for the market to see these names participate. Yeah, the home builders for the past two years helped fuel this bull rally, and, and it's been a little lethargic, stop and go, so it'd be good if it actually continues to take off. And if you look at both these stocks, I think that there are viable spots if they can get through. You know, if you go to the chart here, you'll see massive resistance. First stock, Lennar, look at this. You are right here at major resistance, and it's also not a leader. You know, it's not up here trying to break above 44. It's in this lower area. So with that being said, if it were to hang out, I don't know if it tries today, but if it were to stay above, just say, this moving average or this top third of this range after this breakout, I do think that this will be a nice, juicy Bible area right around 38. Mm, and Toll Brothers also enjoyed a nice gain yesterday of about 3.6%. What levels to watch here? You know, this one looks pretty, pretty similar. It has that same lower level resistance and, you know, watch them as a group because if you look here at Toll Brothers, you know, the chart is, again, it's a lagger type trade, but it's coming up for like the fourth time here versus 35. Again, not a leadership group like if it was, if it was trying to break above prior highs, but, you know, you do have massive consolidation in the last six, seven months coming up to 35. This should be on your radar, if not today, within coming sessions for it to break above. I would watch the two of them together. And switching gears to the biotechs, we know this has been a strong group, but it looks like they really found their footing here. Let's talk Alexian, which had moved back to highs 4.5% gain yesterday. Yes, this actually is closer to the highs versus some other bios, so it looks good. You look at ALXN, this chart looks like it's ready to go. Yesterday, it did break above resistance. It's at the highs here, so if it were to get above yesterday's high here of 128.90, I think it continues just to show you how the relative strength here versus the group, because you go to the IBB and you'll see how it just turned up. So here you have the, the ETF for all of the bios, which you could choose as a vehicle, you know, not close to the highs, and then you go back to ALXN, which is right there. So that's showing you that this is trying to lead the way. And Celgene actually put in some action that was a sign to take notice, basically. Can we get ahead of this trade before a big move? Well, well, this one is your day one. It's a red dog reversal. It's kind of like the ETF where it's not at highs, but it's been a quality name and it's coming a lot. So people have been looking for that type of you know, support there. So if you look at the chart here of Celgene, you'll see you have a day one. You have 
you know, a, a, a move off the moving average. It closed on the highs. Don't know if it's up or down this morning, but this is now your new pivot. You know, look where the highs were. If you buy a dip versus, you know, buying momentum, this was your spot to, to look at. And if it's down a little bit today, trade it long versus the low here of 157, and hopefully it could build for you. Okay, let's do some quick hits. Let's check in on Apple. It held its prior breakout level yesterday, but does it look like it needs some time before some better action? Well, well yesterday they didn't get the China Mobile deal, so we talked about two levels, 546 and 538. It went to 538 and it bounced off there well. I actually missed this trade because I was focused on the banks and doing other things, and it is what it is. It was funny. People were like, oh, I'm in Apple. How come you're not with me? I feel naked without you. Which, <laughs> anyway, with that being said, you know, on the virtual trade floor, everyone likes to hold each other's <laughs> hands. So with that being said, once again, you go to uh, the chart of Apple, you'll see it had a heck of a move off the lows. You know, this was a viable spot, a viable spot, and then, you know, it kind of came in and somewhat fell. But if you look at it in perspective, it really didn't fell. It just came in and held above the 50, reclaimed the 21 day. You know, this was that prior pivot, which it did hold. So if you bought it there, congrats. And now I would say if it holds above 545-ish for a little bit, maybe we get a trade above 551 to fill the gap. And then at some point, this descending trend line moves lower, and then we get going once again. But overall, I like that it didn't, you know, close on the dead lows and there were some buyers on the dip. How about GE? Had a nice move back to highs yesterday. What are you watching here today? You know, I was just looking for some exposure. The financials were strong. This is a little, a little industrial, a little financial, and it looks good. You look at the chart. I know it went ex-dividend today, but overall, this looks like it could take out the highs of the year. And if you go to the weekly chart, you know, or let's go to the monthly chart, actually, you could see that, you know, it does have room, I think, into next year, if you're playing this as a swing, to, you know, close to maybe $34 to $35 a share. And Elon Musk, Solar City, hovering around the 8 and 21 day. Are you watching this for a... Uh, breakout. Yeah, well, the, the solars have been kind of lethargic and they've been a bit random. But overall, you look at the chart here of Solar City, and it's kind of pent up and tight, and we like to see that in some names for you know for points of reference. And if you go here to Solar City, you'll see that this range is getting tight. And granted, recently it's been frustrating, but that's what stocks like to do, you know. And if it were to start getting above, say 54. It can get back on track, but make sure the group is strong because a lot of the names in the group aren't really doing much. You know, they're just kind of hanging around. Same thing as like this, you know, FSLR and CSIQ. But overall, it seems like they're they should be on the radar and they could go if they want to. How about Netflix? It had a nice move back into the current pivot high of eight, uh, 377 into the close yesterday. Uh, do you expect it to be able to break above this level? Well, this. There's a setup there. Whenever Netflix has a setup, traders take notice, and it's been following the eight day. If you look at the, the trend, it's been kind of wishy washy, but overall, following the eight and 21, now you have this four day pivot. You have a, a, a resistance zone, then there's definitely a lot of shorts in this thing. So if it were to take out this resistance zone of 377, you could get a cash flow move. And look at it, it's almost working its way back to the highs that it had on earnings before. You know, Uncle Carl came out and sold some of his shares that he bought pre-100 bucks. Well, and also uh, Facebook will not only be in the headlines today, but on a lot of traders' radars after announcing that it's buying startup Sportstream and also announced a uh, secondary offering of 70 million shares, raising about $4 billion. So what do we do with Facebook today? Well, you know, a lot of people are upset, but, you know, these guys, <laughs> it's been a great investment vehicle for investors, for traders, and they're allowed to buy low, sell high, right? That's what traders try and do, or even investors. So with that being said, the offering is a little bit of a surprise. So if you took home the shares because it closed strong at highs, there's really nothing you could do about it, except for probably just have a little bit of patience. If you're not involved and you're looking for opportunity, you know, it's already off, off the lows. I think it was down as, as low as 53 and a half. Now it's higher. You go to the chart. I would say, you know, if it could see this eight-day moving average, you know, 53.32, which it did pre-market, Maybe try and buy some Versac, considering that's been the support that's held since the red dog reversal down here at 4404. This was your exciting spot for action. Here was an exciting spot. If you happen to still be in it because it took out the prior highs, you know, it, it definitely you know, gets a little complicated this morning, but I think you're going to be just fine. All right, so what would be your closing advice on how to approach a trading session today? If you went to your Christmas party last night, probably go take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> or take it easy. Or, you know, if you, if you haven't and you're feeling nice and, you know, well-rested, today is probably a day that um, the indices might kind of just sit and go sideways. We'll digest. Yes, the Dow was up 300 points. So with that being said, when the indices maybe digest, go sideways, 
that's when you look for the relative strength in key stocks, the relative weakness, and you find individual plays the way we've been trying to find them throughout the course of December because there's been a lot of them, both long and short. So with that said, we went over enough names for you to focus on. I would take today slow. If you missed yesterday, don't revenge trade. If you're still caught short yesterday and you missed your opportunities, just make sure you have an out. And hopefully you haven't been doing that all year because if you've been short all year, you know, you're probably hating the market, whereas the market's given you a lot to love and a lot to be thankful for. And it could have given you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And with that said, happy trading, everybody. Have a great day.